You know, they say that revenge is a dish best served cold. I don't know who they are. I don't know when they said it. And I really don't give a shit because I'm coming for revenge. I'm a big revenge guy. That's just the way it is in life, in fantasy, in sports betting. If there's revenge, I'm coming for it. And today is no different. Is that one of the seven deadly sins? I, I never can remember like the final two or three. It's like the seven dwarfs. Oh, yeah. Happy, sleepy, grumpy. Uh, uh. It's like when you when you know the first part of a song, but not the rest of it is revenge. One of the seven deadly sins. It sounds like it might be there. I don't know, but I think it's part of the seven deadly sniffs. Some that we're going to give you today. I have a couple bets that I like. Yes, some of them are revenge oriented. We came last week for someone who owed us money. We made Calvin Ridley pay us from last week and then pay us for the week before. And we have some of those from last week because like the Lannisters, I never forget. I never forget who screws me, who owes me, and who offers me great promotions like Bet365, where if you're a new user over there and you sign up and you deposit 10 and bet $5 on anything, they're gonna give you $150 in free bonus bets to use on whatever you want, as long as you're 21 and located in one of the states that actually has Bet365. Not every single state has it, so make sure you know which states have it. Check the link in the description of this video. There's a link for international users, Canadian users. So just make sure you click the right link and that you're taking advantage of this great promotion. And always remember, if you or anyone you know has a problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER, okay? So the seven deadly sniffs. Should we start with some of the revenge ones or how about some straight up ones? Or how about a real ugly one? Yeah, how about those seven dwarfs? This one's ugly. You're going to hate it. You're going to despise it. I sound like Stephen A. Smith. But one of the worst running backs so far this year, NFL-wise, fantasy-wise, you name it, has been Ramondre Stevenson. That's right. I'm taking the over on his rushing yards. What are you kidding? A.J. Dillon just hit his over by a long shot against the Raiders. The Raiders are that team that everybody can get right against. I don't think it's going to be any different with the New England Patriots. We know how awful Mac Jones has been. So as long as they can keep the score close, they're going to keep out of Mac Jones' hands. I imagine this is the first game that Ramondre Stevenson goes. And, and you know what? I would not even expect you to bet that. I understand. That's like you have to have faith in somebody. But I'm just letting you know, on your little sideboard when you're keeping track of everything, I'm taking the over on Ramondre Steven rushing yards. Another one, you know, typically I don't overvalue things in prime time. You know, there's all this talk around Brock Purdy. Oh, is he a system quarterback? Is he doing this? Is he doing that? Well, they're playing the Cleveland Browns. There's no Deshaun Watson. The last time we saw the Browns play without Deshaun Watson, we saw them try to just stay close in the first half because they have a pretty elite defense but then once it got out of hand it's like all right there's not there's so much we can do and that's something that just naturally happens with great defenses they tire out and in the second half that's when you can start building up some stats uh, on them i'm gonna take the over one and a half passing touchdowns for brock purdy i understand it's a tough defense but if when you think about how good San Fran's defense is, he's going to have multiple opportunities to get these touchdowns. Coming into this season, don't forget how many games in a row he had two touchdowns in. He's coming off, uh, was it a three-touchdown game? On I mean, and he sat the whole fourth quarter. I'm going to take the over one and a half. And in that game, this is a nice snake bet. I'm going to take the over on Jerome Ford receptions and receiving yards. The only game without Deshaun Watson, you want to know how many catches he had? Five. Shh, shh, don't tell anybody. I know Kareem Hunt's been back a few weeks now. The only way I don't see Ford hitting that is if Hunt really takes about half the playing time. I don't really foresee that they seem to like Ford. You know, they chose him over Hunt in the offseason. And against the Niners' run defense, which is unbelievable, you imagine there's going to be a couple design screens, and then even after they go down big, just a couple of checkdowns. This is a great weasel bet. It's Jerome Ford over on receiving yards. We took that Jerome Ford over on receiving yards a couple weeks back, and that ended up being good for us. I'm expecting it is going to be good for us once again. Now let's get into that revenge type of narrative. Actually... There is one guy, he paid us off, Calvin Ridley. Like, you know, he paid his debt, so we're not angry at him. 
So we're going to start with a clean slate. I still think 61 receiving yards is way too low for somebody of Calvin Ridley's caliber going against one of the worst pass defenses in the entire NFL using rookie corners and a makeshift secondary. Calvin Ridley should crush in this game. I will say, rat alert on this game, the same way I said, oh, they were sitting over there in England sipping those tea and crumpets. Well, that's two weeks in England getting acclimated to those time zones. Now you're back in Jacksonville. It's still summer weather. You thought it was on a como. You were in that nice England fall weather, and now you're back in Jacksonville. It's swampy as it's summer. Your whole inner clock is off. It's 1 o'clock in your head. It's 9 o'clock. I don't know if they're going to cover. It sounds like some trouble. The last time we saw Minshew start a game on the road against a team, that was considerably better than them. They went into Baltimore and beat the Ravens. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying everything. <laughs> I wouldn't take Jacksonville by the points. I'm leaving that alone, but I am going to take Calvin Ridley. I do like that 61 and a half receiving yards. And yes, I do like the 70 plus receiving yards. We got to leave him alone. We can't ask for 90. He paid us off he paid us off on the 60, 70, 90. He paid us off big time last week, so we got to leave him alone. If he screws us, then we'll reevaluate the situation. Now come the two guys who owe me some money. And then there's one on Monday, and we'll come for him tomorrow. But, you know, I can only focus my energies on certain people. And this is going to be Jalen Waddell. Listen, he went under on his receiving yardage, but he had 11 targets in the game. It was either he was double-digit targets on a team that has two major pass funnels with those wide receivers. There's no Devon A. Chain in this game, and he was taking a couple dinks and going off with them, and they have an implied 30-point team total. All roads lead to not only is he covering, but he's going up on that alternate as well. I'm going the over on Jalen Waddle, and I, I'm telling you, I'm taking 90 plus two in the high. I think it's like plus 280 unless I'm remembering a different one. But I'm taking him to hit his over on receiving, and then I'm coming for last week's money, too, on that alternate receiving line. And then the other guy, the guy who really screwed me, DFS, uh, here on the Odd Shopper channel. All around this guy screwed me. The first time in two seasons, I couldn't correctly predict when he was going to have a good game. Well, he has another opportunity. We saw Dallas Goddard go off last week. You know, every week you, you wonder, is it Devontae, AJ? You want to know what happened last week? It's like on roulette. Oh, it was a zero. It was a Goddard week. That was tough to predict, especially the way that Goddard has gone the first couple of weeks. But here's what we now officially know about the Eagles. There was nothing for AJ Brown early on. He complained and then went off ever since. Dallas Goddard got nothing for a while and then got peppered heavily. If there's ever a week that you can expect Devontae, uh, Devontae Smith to really go nuts. It has to be this week. Sauce Gardner, is if he plays, I heard he might not play, is going to be glued to A.J. Brown. That's going to free up Devontae Smith against the other corners on the Jets. This has to be a Devontae Smith game. And his over-under is in the 50s. And I'm sorry, but the way he is, he's catching like 30-yard balls. It's not... I feel like if he beats this, he's going to crush it. So give me the over on Devontae uh, Smith receiving, and then give me the alternate like 80 plus. Yeah, that's right. I'm doing it with a bunch of those guys once again. And as far as spreads are concerned, a lot of rust on this slate, if you ask me. The only thing that really stood out to me was... Don't bet on the Jaguars. And I weirdly do think the Rams are going to comfortably win against um, the Arizona Cardinals. And, and I actually would take the alternate on passing touchdowns for Matt Stafford. I don't know if his is at one and a half, but I would take over two and a half. Did you see cut back last week? Now, he had to deal with the Eagles not necessarily the secondary, but the line, you know, it kind of engulfed theirs in the second half. And it also, it just took off chunks and chunks and chunks of time. But against Arizona, who certainly is in Philadelphia, I think Stafford's going to be able to carve them up. Now that he's got Nakua and Cup with Higby and Atwell out there and then Kyron out of the backfield, so many pass catchers 
I think he's going to go over two and a half touchdowns. That should be the alternate. And then Joe Burrow, obviously, he returned to form last week. And it wasn't just, oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. He like ran for a 12-yard first down full sprints. The calf looks good. I think he's getting T. Higgins back, who was a full participant in practice. We saw Chase have like three, four touchdowns last week. I imagine it's going to continue. They have his number at one and a half right now. He should be able at home to throw a couple touchdowns against the Seahawks D. So I will take the over on Burrow one and a half touchdowns. That's what I have for you. Sunday week six. I like these picks. If there was more spreads that I like, I promise you, I'd give them to you. I only like the seven deadly sniffs. And most of those happen to be props this week. Hey, I sniff what I sniff and then I present them to you. You see? All right, I will be back with you guys on Sunday to talk about Monday Night Football or Sunday into Monday, and I got a little something I like there. It's a good game. I do like. I think this is a good game. A lot of narratives between these two teams, two teams who like blowing games, but people have high hopes for them. There are some things I like in there, so I will see you guys then. Make sure you check out the episode of Francis and Friends that uh, we uploaded on Friday the 13th, my kind of day, you know, big Halloween guy here. I'm going to enjoy the whole rest of this month the same way hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos, which is why you should be subscribed to the Odd Shopper channel here and follow me on social media as always so I can communicate any new news to you guys because, you know, I'd like to stay in touch with you. All right, good luck to you. Better luck to me. I'll talk to you next time.